Welcome to SS Unitech Social This Side and this is continuation of ADF tutorial. So in the last video of this video series, we have discussed about the set variable activities and today we are going to start with the if condition activity. So if you haven't watched last two videos of this video series, so I would strongly recommend to watch that video. So this is the continuation of that video. So first we have discussed about lookup activity and after that we have discussed about the set variable activity so what is the if condition so the if condition activity provides the same functionality that an if statements provide in the programming languages so like in the programming languages we are having one condition and if condition is satisfied then we are having one block for the true and another block for the false if that condition is satisfied then it will be going to execute your true block and if condition is false, then it will be executing your false block. So such type of conditions we have already seen in the programming languages. So similarly here we are having this if condition activity. So it execute a set of activity when the condition evaluates to true. As I told you, if this condition is satisfied with true, then your true block will be executed. And another set of activity when condition evaluates to false. The same thing if this condition will be failed then your false block will be executing so how we can use this in our real-time environment so go to on the browser and we'll try to understand the requirement so here if you have remember first we are having the lookup activity then set variable activity inside the sql server we are having one of the source and on that source we have one column that is the refresh date so as per the requirement, if the refresh date column value is more than the current month's first date. So for example, here it is 26th of May and this is 4th of April. So this condition is not going to satisfy. So your false block will be executing. We'll see later in this video. So as per the condition, if this will be satisfying the condition, then data should be loaded from this table to another DB and here is the table so we just want to dump the data from here to there but the condition is for the refresh date so for that we have already get the refresh date from this lookup activity and after that we have declared a variable where we have set the value of the refresh date so let me try to debug it quickly and i will show you that so it got executed successfully if we can check the output of the refresh date then we can see the last refresh date which is the 4th of april as we have already seen inside the sql server so this is the format that you have remember like we have to use the same format in our if condition so let me close this and here let me drag and drop the if condition from this activity so this is the if condition and this should be connected after this set variable so under this if condition First, we are checking if the variable which is refresh date, that value is greater than current month's first date. So how we can do that? For that here, we can rename this to checking refresh date. Go to the activity. Here we can see the expression. So we are more concerned how we can write the expression so we can click on that and add dynamic content we can click on here so for writing the expression i'll i'll be recording a detailed video how we can write the expressions here but as of now you only understand we have to check if your refresh date value is more than the current month's first date so for that we have to write the greater the first one we have to specify two parameters so it will be checking the first parameter and the second parameter so first parameter value that is coming from the variable which is the last refresh date so we can click on the here and let me put on comma if you have remember then this last refresh date we have some format that we have already seen the output of the set variable activity now here we have to calculate the current month's first date so how we can do that so for that the first thing we have to get the current month today's date 
so that will be the UTC now here we have to open the parenthesis and close that so this will be going to check for the today's date but that is not the case the case to check the first date of current month so how we can do that so we have a function that is start of month like this and like that so it will be going to get the current month first date now the format that will be the same as we have already seen the format inside the variable that will be having the values up to decimal places so similarly here we have to use the format function so how we can do the formatting of this so we have to use the format date time function so this will be formatting your string value so this should be the format date time now here we have to specify on which format we want to do the formatting of this date so that is your year first then month then day after that we have to specify hour minute and seconds and here let me close the parenthesis so everything looks good so what it is doing so first it is going to check the greater of this refresh date so this refresh date value should be greater than this equation and as per this equation first we are going to get the today's date by using this utc now and after that we are going to get the start of this month so that will be the first day of current month so in our case that will be first of may and after that we are doing the formatting of this the same format as we have already inside this variable so this is done now we can click on ok so if condition is completed next if this if condition will be satisfying then what we want to do so here we can see we have true and false so inside the true we can add the activities and inside the false we can add the activities so for the true let me click on here and we just want to copy the data from one location to another location so we can use the copy data activity go to other source and inside the source we have to select the data set so as we have already created the data set so let me try to get that one so this is a data set which is pointing the ssu database inside a sql server so this is the same thing like here we have these four rows we can confirm from here by using this preview data option so we can click on that so as we can see we are having these four rows there so this is for the source similarly we can do for the sync as we have already created that so this is for the sync and here everything is okay we can go on the mapping and import the schema so we can just verify that we have only four columns and those should be matching so as we can see all these are matching so everything looks good now here let me try to publish this and click on publish so it is deploying the changes now publish is completed go back to the if condition and here let me try to debug it so once we are going to execute this so as we have already seen in our database we are having the data for the last month so the refresh date is indicating for the last month so this copy data activity should not be executed so we can check so it is executed successfully but if we can go here then this copy data activity did not executed or we can also verify from this output like here if condition is executed set variable executed lookup activity is executed but copy data did, did not execute it so go back to the sql server let me try to update this refresh date and this time this refresh date will be indicating for the current month 4th of the may so let me try to check it here so everything is updated that looks good now go back to the azure data factory and try to debug it again so this time your copy data should be executed and data should be loaded inside the destination so we can wait so it is executing
so now here we can see copy data is executing so it is loading the data into the destination site so let me refresh it so copy data is completed so if your if condition will be completing soon so everything is executed successfully now go back to the SQL server and we'll try to refresh the table by pressing Control R and we'll be having all those four rows here. So that we can see all the data that is loaded successfully in our destination table. So this is the use of the if condition. At the same thing, we have not discussed yet how we can send the email or the notification. So in the false part, I'll be going to cover how we can send the emails in the later of this video series. So we can set up the false if your data is not updated. Then we can send the email to the source team by which we are getting the data. Like your data is not updated for this month. So such type of email we can send inside this false blog. So I hope guys you have better understanding about the if condition. If you have still any doubt then you can comment your questions in the comment section. I will try to respond there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you really like this video, please subscribe our channel to get many more videos. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our newly uploaded videos. See you in the next video.